Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you what I made using the new Lumberjack Plaid Distress Oxide. Let's get started. Starting off, I am using the Pink Fresh Studios Layering Argyle Stencil. And I am going in with that luscious, gorgeous Lumberjack Plaid. I absolutely love this red. I think it is amazing. Uh, this is like the type of lipstick color I used to wear when I was younger. This bold, gorgeous red. Oh, I'm gushing. Sorry, I'm a little too excited about this color. I'm very particular about the color of red, and my, my favorite red would be this one, and I'm just happy to have it, as you can tell. Sorry, being a bit of a weirdo here. <laughs> anyway, I'm going in with some Rustic Wilderness because why not? I thought about using the Pine Needle, but the undertone of the Pine Needle, I didn't quite, like, didn't quite capture what I was trying to make here. And I'm thinking along the lines of, like, a vintage Christmas card because... Rustic Wilderness and the Lumberjack Plaid, to me, together, kind of gave off that bit of a vibe. And, I don't know, I, I just thought it would be kind of neat to get a vintage Christmas card out and ready. And this seems to be, like, pretty easy to mass produce, I think. I could probably get away with, like, doing a whole bunch of these. Uh, here, I, like, I've got some, uh, what do you call it? Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. That's what I'm ink blending on. Uh, it, it would be an expensive <laughs> mass-produced card, but boy, does this stuff spread on there like butter. I uh, I really like ink blending on the Bristol Smooth, and I like the finish of it too because it is a very smooth surface to ink blend on. And I don't know. I just I can't get over this red. I am so excited, you guys. <laughs> So, when you do the stencil, uh, you got to make sure that when you go in with a second color, that you get that white border around it, each of the diamonds. That way, when you go in with the second layer of the stencil, uh, you kind of keep it in tune with the with the border, with the white border around the diamonds. And for this one, I am going in very heavy-handed with my. Starting to dry out black soot. I'm going to need to get a reinker for this one soon. But I found that I really had to work with this one to get it nice and dark um, in order to achieve the argyle pattern. Or maybe maybe I'm just losing my mind. I don't know. But I find when I ink blend with my black soot, sometimes it feels a little bit drier than some of my other ink white distress oxide inks. So here you have the pattern. Next, I'm gonna go in with the pearl gold of the Fine Tech Iridescent Watercolors that I have. I really like this set. I actually like all my sets and I would love to get more. So I'm gonna load that up with some water from my spritz bottle and slush that around with my paintbrush. And then I'm gonna go all willy nilly with the splatter. Now, I was a little too excited over splattering in making this vintage-style Christmas card that I probably could have just gotten my splatter box out, but I was lazy, and I didn't, and it is what it is. Mind the noise. There's traffic going around me right now. There's that. Gorgeous. Next, I've got the Many Merry Sentiments from Spellbinders that I got in my last haul video. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and uh, see what I got going on in my last video. It just shows what I got with the Lumberjack Plaid. So here I'm pulling out the Merry Christmas and figuring out exactly how I want to go about putting this onto my scrap piece of cardstock here. This again is that Bristol Smooth. I cut off the end of the panel that I stenciled on. And I'm just reading the sentiments here, trying to figure out if I want to add another one or not. But I think, you know, the Merry Christmas will probably be enough. 
And then I'm not sure if I want to use ink or if I want a heat emboss, but I don't have a heat emboss color to, or embossing powder, sorry, color to kind of go with that gold that I splattered all over my card. I probably should have thought about that before I did some splatter if I was going to do heat embossing, but I didn't. I was kind of going with the flow. So here I'm just going to use some Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 and ink this up a couple of times. And then, oops, sorry for the noise again. And then I will cut this out with the coordinating die, as you will see here in a second. I kind of like how this cut out. I was, I was quite pleased with the amount of border these letters had around them. Hold on, let me get this all cleaned up a little bit. This is why we use Splatterbox, folks because it gets all over the place. So I just spritz some water on there with my paper towel. And I'm gonna line these guys up to make sure that I get an even cut. So mind my head. And uh, ah, I was quite pleased with this Merry Christmas. It, it really fit well with the card I found. I think I would like to use this on many more Christmas cards that I am going to make in the near future. So once I've got those all cut out, you get to see what they look like. I think they're cute. And I'm going to set those off to the side, and I'm going to cut out my panel. So here I've got the Lawn Fawn Outside Institched Rectangle Die. And once I'm happy with the alignment of where I want to cut, this is why I stenciled extra. Um, I'm going to pull that out very carefully. I find that the outside in stitched rectangle dies will stick a little bit, especially if they're well loved. So you got to be careful when you're popping them out like this. So I will set that one down and I use the outside in stitched uh, scallop die and I use this shiny textured cardstock that I have. I think I got it from the dollar store or something. And then I've got some black cardstock that I use the outside in stitch circle die. And I'm not sure if I wanted to add the circle or not. It was kind of a toss up. I like the yellow by itself, but then I decided, you know, it needed a pop of black in there just to kind of make the yellow stand out a little bit more. And then I think maybe I could add another piece of yellow cardstock in there. You'll see here in a minute. I like the way it looked like that, but I, I thought I had to be extra. And I thought maybe I could put one of those in the center. And then it kind of took away with the brightness and the contrast. I mean, I could have. It looks cute. But I end up going with the, um, just with that. I thought it looked a lot better just like that. I don't know. I'll save that for another project. So once I'm happy, I'm going to glue down the Merry and the Christmas to my little, I don't know what you'd call it, my little gold and black burst of color for my card. So popping those guys down, and then I will give them a good mash as to where everybody's got to go. And then I'll add some glue to the Merry. And we will glue those little letters down. I don't know. I found the thicker cardstock for this one worked quite well in giving it dimension. I could have added like some Wink of Stella or a Jelly Roll or something or some embellishments. But I kind of like the way the card looked just plain, I guess, without the zazzle and zing. So again, just using some glue and some easy runner tape because this is a little bit heavy. And I want to make sure that this had a lot of stick to it. And kind of gluing it off center, not off center, but askew, kind of angled a little bit. I'll press that down with some blocks. And then I will take my panel and I will glue this down onto a piece of black cardstock. And then I will glue that down to my card base. So I got that lovely little black border around the edge. And I will tape this up, as you can see here. Add a little bit of glue. And then I will line this up into the one corner so I have that nice, thin, tiny, little eighth of an inch border around that. 
And then I will pull out my Fiskars guillotine trimmer and just take a hair or two off of the edge. This is, uh, yeah, that was a little silly. I mean, I could have overcut this, uh, but I was making a little bit of a hasty decision. <laughs> so once I'm happy with that, I will go in with my card base and figure out what sentiment I want to use. There's a lot of great sentiments on this one. Uh, offhand, I can't see which ones they are, but I ended up going with, like, I think, my family to yours, or from my family to yours, which, I don't know, I thought was a good one. I'll even that out a little bit there. And again, I'll take my ink on three, blackout ink, and then just go over that a couple of times. Yeah. From our family to yours. How sweet. So once I'm done with that, I will put that away and we will glue down the card base and the card panel and then it will be done. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought about the new plaid, the lumberjack plaid. Truth be told, I thought it was just called lumberjack and my sister-in-law was like lumberjack plaid oh my god so cool and I thought she meant like plaid I guess I probably could have paid a little bit more attention to the Tim Holtz video but I was so drooly over the color so yeah it's lumberjack plaid and there's my finished card and here you have it folks I think I might make a few more of these cards I think they're absolutely cute I love the lumberjack plaid and uh yeah so if you've enjoyed today's content or found it helpful please give this video a like i also welcome you to subscribe as i post weekly here's another video i think you might enjoy thanks for hanging out with me today take care